Hello and welcome back. Today I'm just going to be giving you an overview of how I implemented audio. It's not exactly going to be a tutorial because there's not actually all that much code. It's just a bunch of little things that need to be changed. So we're going to go over everything that I changed and then after that we're going to kind of do a full rundown of the entire project, talk about all the things I like about it as well as all the things maybe I don't like as much about it and kind of the situation with GitHub as well because I do need to kind of resolve that before we go into the next tutorials and after this video we will no longer be working on the FPS horror series. So I'm kind of excited to move on, but let's go ahead and get started and just kind of go over everything we've done. All right, so starting off with ambience, we have a couple ambiences here. The first off is the cave ambience and it just kind of plays everywhere. And it's just gonna sound like this. Then going on over to the temple, we have a different ambient audio that plays when you're near the giant structure. And that sounds like this. And it's a little bit unsettling, but if you just play both of them together, you can just barely hear it due to its localized, due to its 3D nature. Now, the whole opening to the night, that's the final chamber, currently has this audio. And then the whole opening to the day currently has this audio. And once again, both of those are localized using the audio stream player 3D node. Now, I could get a bit more complicated with that. I could put different little audio sources here and there for different drips or what have you. But for now, this will be pretty much all I'm going to do. It just gets the job done. It's not too complicated. Now, you might have also noticed the audio cue player. The audio cue player, and I'm just going to show it in C Sharp here, but the all the code will be duplicated into Godot script, is really simple. And it just has two functions here, one for playing the audio cue baseline and one for playing it with 3D. And all it's going to do is spawn in a audio cue 3D object, which we'll get to in a second, and put it to the location given, play the audio given, and begin the play function, which each one of them has a play function that all it does is play, a way to signal until the end of the stream so that's whenever the audio is done and then cue free and that's the exact same for the audio cue as it is with the audio cue 3d that's why i'm not really going to go over the coding because it's really simple it's dead simple the only real complexity here is going through all of the places that we want the audio to play we of course have a couple audio we of course have a couple locations in the weapons effects controller for the reloading and the firing revolver. Now the reloading is actually handled via animation, but the firing revolver is not. So the firing revolver all it has is an array of gunshot sounds here and they're just of type audio stream. Then it calls the group audio cues and within Godot you can see the audio cue player is within the group audio cues. And it calls the function play audio cue 3D, gives it a random sound by taking the gunshot sounds and getting a random I number between zero and gunshot sounds dot count minus one. And we just do that using the new random number generator function. And it gives it the barrels end dot global position. And then it passes in a number here, which is just the value of the volume. So the volume dB is in dBs, of course. If you go into the positive, it's going to make it louder. If you go into the negative, it's going to make it quieter. And I found that specifically for the gunshots, five just worked out. And everywhere else that you can find them, they're either going to be the audio cue 3D or just the audio cue. And that's pretty much every time we need to call any sort of audio cue. We also have these over in the enemy AI controller for whenever we're dead versus whenever we're damaged. As well as in the limb placement controller, we have footstep sounds and jump sounds. The jump sounds are just for the attacking, whereas for normal jumping, we actually just play a footstep sound, but at a louder volume. And for the kickoff velocity is when we're actually stepping, we just play the footsteps down at a quieter volume. And that pretty much gets the job done for any sort of movements. And that's pretty much it for the audio. It's like I said, it's really not complicated. It's just a matter of finding all the locations for it. And there is a lot of audio samples as well. All of these audio samples are free to free to use for whatever you want. I either made them or a friend of mine made them for me. Now, besides that, we are going to go over pretty much the entire project and I'm going to go over all the different parts I like or dislike. Now, first off for what worked, the atmosphere. I love the atmosphere. I'm really enjoying the volumetrics. I do want to continue using them in future projects, and I love how they interact with environments. The shadows are a little bit janky at times, but they still get the job done. And going forward, I'm definitely wanting to move into the baked lighting and the light mapping. I want to test those out and see how those work. But the end result so far is very pleasing to me. I very much like the atmosphere of the entire project. Next up is actually learning gameplay loops. 
I realized after I worked on this project for a little while that there were quite a few things that I just didn't know very well about making gameplay loops fun. That's going to be something that I need to work on in the future. While I do very much enjoy the atmosphere of this project and I do want to continue making projects like this, I also do want to work on gameplay, just trying out new gameplay mechanics, learning new things. And that's something that I kind of experimented with with this project, learning how to make the gameplay fun with just a very simple mechanic of shooting at enemies and making them crawl on the ceilings and stuff. And it's something that I definitely want to explore in the future. And I think in addition to this, the thing that I like the most about this entire project is just having such a large scale project actually under my belt, something done. And specifically having something like this done in Godot. And that's something that, while not all that important for my business or for my future, as far as like my game development endeavors, it's really important for my own just self-validation and self-worth. I kind of focus on making projects a lot in my hobby time and having something that I can just look at as being done, something I can look at and show to other people as being done is something that is very nice to have. And I cannot recommend it enough for people going forward with their own projects. Now on to what didn't work. The first thing that didn't work is large scale projects. This project has been over a long time scale and I realized after getting started and getting about halfway through that if people weren't sticking around from the beginning all the way to the end, they really weren't going to be able to get the whole thing. And I've made over 40 videos for this project. And 40 videos is a lot of screen time to watch through. And I realized after I made a particularly long video that a lot of people were simply not going to use it. And the whole point of tutorials is for people to use it and learn and improve. And since that was not going to be fulfilled very much with this project, I did kind of want to go ahead and wrap it up a little bit earlier than I originally had anticipated. I wanted to kind of take it a little bit further than I did, but stopping it here is probably prudent. In addition to this and kind of in tandem to this, have Having two videos a week is a little bit much for my time scale, especially having two videos that are upwards of 30 minutes long. I think in the future I'm going to stick to one video a week with both code bases right next to each other like I was in the past and try to only do two videos a week when I'm doing devlogs of some sort. And also to that sentiment, I think videos need to be shorter unless they are devlogs. If they're devlogs, I don't mind pushing them up to 30 minutes or 45 minutes. If I'm exploring a rather complex subject, that's not really something I'm expecting everyone to want to look at. And the people that do want to look at it, I think want to see the in-depth data and the in-depth updates. And so I'm not too concerned about making them longer, but the actual tutorials, I need people to actually be able to digest them in order to get any use from them. And in order for that, I need to have shorter tutorials, I believe. Now, I did do some experiments with GitHub this time around. I broke down each of the different episodes into a different folder, and this will not be the case going forward. This did not work due to size constraints. I believe it was an inhibitor for people actually downloading the project and getting involved and working on their their own project with the code and things like that as in order to download the project you have to use git large file support and for that you have to actually clone the git repo and there's like 20 gigabytes for each of the different repos so that's not ideal what i'm going to do going forward is have links in the readme to different commits for each of the different updates so if you want a specific update you go to that commit you browse at that history and you download at that commit and that way people can download at any point that they want but they don't have to have all of the data they don't have to have the latest version and they can get the exact episode that they want without having to without having to download 20 gigabytes of project folders now that being said i am still pleased with this project i am quite pleased with this project more so than i am with most of my projects i'm very much enjoying some of the atmosphere and some of the mechanics like making the flashlight look at targets are things i wanted to explore for other projects and i very much enjoy the result in a actual completed environment it is very enjoyable for me to see those sorts of little nuances like that. And going forward, I do want to continue experimenting with some of these mechanics. Now, the gunplay wasn't exactly my favorite. I did enjoy the creatures, but the creatures also, I feel like needed a lot more polish and a lot more effort put into their animations, as that was kind of the entire point of this series, and I'm still not 100% pleased with them. Though, especially in a crowd, they actually look quite intimidating and quite nerve-wracking, which is kind of the point of the entire project. So in that way, I think that the project's 
succeeded and I'm looking forward to moving on with the next project and taking what I've learned and going forward. But as for now, I want to thank everyone for watching the series. If you watched the whole series, kudos to you. Thank you so much for sticking around through a rather dense series, I'll admit. And next week, we're just going to go back to some beginner tutorials, things that I've been asked for. I'll have to look at my backlog and see what's first on the backlog. But thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I hope you all have had a wonderful time with this project. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.